so if you uh, listen to my video blog last week, we talked about using the choice filter web part. So today we're going to look at the current user filter web part. Uh, I just love these series because there's so many great web parts out there that really allow you to customize the look and feel of your site so that the users have a really, uh, really productive and, and delightful experience when they navigate to your SharePoint sites. So uh, here we just have a project site and let's see in this project site we have a document library. Uh, just a couple of documents modified by you know a couple of people student 01 in this case and then uh, then I modified three documents and then we've got the documents are in you know some different project phases <clears throat> we also have a task list if you saw my video video blog post last week these are the same same task list and, and uh, document library we used last week but notice we've got tasks they're assigned to multiple different people uh, but I've got a couple of tasks just assigned to me. So what I'd like to do is here on this filter page, when this page opens, I want the page and all of the contents on the page to be customized to the current user that's visiting the page. Uh, certainly, I could create a view for each library and, and for the task list and have that view filter on the current user. Well, we can certainly do that, but th that, that's really limiting. Uh, because when we use the current user uh, filter web part, we can actually use Active Directory and SharePoint profile properties to narrow down how the page is viewed. So basically, on this page, I just want to see documents that I've modified last. So that will be these three documents uh, here, the proposal document, the change request, and the call center document. In the task list, I only want to see tasks that are currently assigned to me, so the current user that's logged in to the site. So we can use the current user filter web part for that, and we'll just, to, to insert that filter on the page, it doesn't matter where it goes because it's, it's going to be invisible. But I'll just go into page edit mode, and then just again, anywhere on the page, we'll just insert from the web part gallery from the filters category we will grab the current user filter web part now it's a little bit quirky and whether Microsoft fix this little bug or not I don't know but in order to get to the properties it's a little strange because normally we can roll the mouse into the top right hand corner to see the drop down arrow but it's not showing here so basically select the web part and then on the toolbar just go ahead and choose web part properties and the first set of properties we need to configure over here in the web part window is what value to provide. Now you got to be careful. If you use the current username, you may think, well, that would filter the call center document here and the change request document to to the current user. But it doesn't work that way because it it actually uses this format that we see here out to the right of the example here. So what we want to actually use is a SharePoint profile value. Okay, and notice all the different values that you could use to do filters on so it could be based on your department your birthday things in your ask me about first name hire date phone number those kinds of things but if we choose name from the profile properties this is the name that will match the modified by field here displayed in SharePoint okay so once we've done that if we come back over here to the web part itself notice now the drop down appears I don't know explain that one to me now we can go to the drop down menu and start creating connections to both the document library and the task list to filter on the value we chose over here in the properties window so let's send the filters values to the document library and the filter filter value from and click configure I want to use the modified by field Okay, so I only want to filter and see documents that were last modified by the person who matches the name over here on the right. Okay, so now we'll just do one more connection. Click on the drop down, go to connections, and you'll notice the document library is already connected. So now we'll connect the task list. And again, get filter values from and in the task list we want to use the assign to field so that's pretty sweet and should be pretty self-explanatory let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the properties pane click OK 
And now you don't really see anything. The web part is here, which can be a little deceiving. So you've got to you've got to remember that you did this filter web part. Now we'll go ahead and save the page. And you'll notice that the filter web part doesn't display, but we're seeing the task list filtered on who it's assigned to, and the modified by field here in the document library is filtered as well. So there you go. That's a great web part that you can use anytime you want to really customize the, uh, the experience that the user has on the page. All right, next week we'll look at another of these fancy filter web parts just so you can, uh, can sort of wrap up all your uh, understanding of how they work. Okay, well, great for, uh, great for, uh, uh, great thanks actually for, t for tuning in today. A little tongue tied today. Thanks for tuning in and uh, look forward to seeing you for my next video blog post.